Good morning. It is technically day three of the rewire. We're over in Birmingham, Solihull, uh, for Raj. This is the, the fantastic one we've been doing. Jack's with, been with me for the past two days. I'm sorry, I've knobbed up long. Left the house at 10 to 6, managed to get here for 7. And the reason is that Wednesday, the first day we were here, I left at my house about half an hour later, which then made me hit all the traffic, and then it took me two and a half hours to get here. So the order I leave, the quicker I get here, I can't really make any noise. I'm going to be just for the first 45 minutes just moving and tidying and writing notes down of what's left to do. But there's a clip that Jack's done. He already released the video. Um, a little bit of him talking at the end. If I can, if I'll ask his permission, I'll attach it now. But don't use the stapler like that, because that's what's going to happen. Slipped Look at that. It. You've only just caught it, though. And, uh, only the neutral. You'd have been all right. Nick's carrying on. Fair play to him. I do not know how he gets so much done with how iron he is about everything. Honestly, the amount of clips and things he's pulled out because they're two mil higher or anything, it's, it is perfection-like, but it's not really needed, is it? Let me know in the comments what you think about that. I think it's not needed. Yes, it looks nice, but the extra time it takes, it's a bit OTT for me. So essentially what it is, I know he got under my skin and I got under his skin with the way we now both work. Jack, is a great electrician and he's a very good friend. But the way I do stuff, especially now with YouTube, which I'll get into in a second, is completely different to the way he does stuff or other Sparks do stuff. And I get that because all the hard work and effort I go to with the oval, sticking it into the, to the boxes, the all round band, drilling all the joists in lovely lasered lines and marking it all out with a square to make sure it's all level, I know is completely unnecessary to any normal Spark. But for me, the time lost on, let's say, doing these extra details is made up when I do a video. I recuperate the money lost with that. But I'm now at the position with Raj, with the last customer I did the rewire over in uh, Stoke. They have seen me do things to the best of my physical ability with the time not wasted, but extended to do things to the best of my ability. So now all these people are reaching out to me saying, Nick, can you do a rewire? I love the way you work, which is fantastic for me. But they now expect 100% for me to do things the way they've been seen on the videos. It's not fair for them to go, Nick, I love the way you work. Can you come and do mine? I'll come quote it and then just throw the cables in. Let's say like I used to, or other sparks would just willingly drill joists as and where it fits and suits to pull cables through. They expect top notch stuff because that's what they've seen. That's what they expect. And that's what I want to give. So that's the difference between, I would say, a normal spark and me is I've now put myself on this pedestal with quality of workmanship and not a massive price. Like I'm not, oh, I sound charging a million pound to do things. I'm still really reasonable compared to everyone else. It's just I like and enjoy the things I do and I like that I've been given the opportunity to do it as neatly as I can. And I want to, to show you guys. And it bounces hopefully off to younger people coming into the trade who see hopefully my videos and they go, that looked really nice. I want to do that when I do my own rewire or I start going self-employed because it's not a lot of extra effort. It's just a bit more planning and thinking and taking a few more boards up in lofts, let's say, sorry, floorboards up upstairs to get these long runs. It's like silly things with fuse boards there. That's the hall. But with here, I've laid it all the way through so I can pull the cables all the way down right to the front door, which I know is unnecessary, but to the eye as we're walking through, it looks really good. And then yesterday I had to run four three corners from here up and across and down. So I pulled them all off the same length and I taped them together as I brought them round just to make my life easier pulling stuff through. And then with the all round band, I've left myself a bit of slack. It's all been clipped with nice joints coming across. I made the effort to go and put pieces of wood in there for the light fittings in case there is a heavy chandelier put in at some point. And hopefully in the next 10, 15, 20 years, once this house is sold and the new people come in and they want a really nice big heavy chandelier light that's above the dining room table, they're gonna thank me that I put, well, the electrician's gonna thank me that I put a nice piece of wood there because it literally took essentially two minutes to do but to me now, I can see the things that I'm picking up that make the job just that bit better. 
And that is why people are starting to get me from YouTube because they're seeing all this stuff, they want the same thing done. And hopefully you guys watching can implement some of the things that I'm doing where you can go, yes, I can justify using the time to do that rather than being criticized, I myself being criticized for doing stuff over the top and essentially wasting time. It's because I have the allowance to waste the time to go the extra effort. So Jack, I love you to pieces. If you ever slag me off on YouTube again, I'll cut you off, no more tool bags for you. I've had a bit of a tidy up. The customer's got underfloor heating all the way downstairs. There's three different zones. We've got kitchen, which is a stat there. We've got a stat in the hallway just over there and then one directly the other side in the lounge. They've asked me to run three core and earth back to this with a socket supply, which is that. So we're gonna do this now. Like I said off the last video, we've got the Doncaster uh, Earthshore, uh, this one, which is the one, this one, which is the 1.5 mil, three quart and earth, obviously pre-sleeved. I'm just gonna run in first because I've only got one drum of 100 meters on me and we already used a significant amount when I did four two-way circuits. So Jack actually came up with a great idea as well. Credit to you, Jack. You, sir, well done. Is from here, we've got a four gang switch. We've got the dining room, we've got the kitchen, Dining room here, which isn't the dining, it's like the second lounge because that bit there is the dining room. So second lounge, dining room, kitchen, and undercover lights. So we've got four feeds here, well, four different lights. We've got dining room, kitchen right, kitchen left, under cab. And the same thing over there, we've got a, I'm trying to find on the camera, a four gang switch, which does exactly the same. This has a feed to it. 240 feet, live neutral earth, and then that one does over there as well. So what I'm gonna to do to save the amount of connections and cables in the back is use two, do the two two ways from this bit, and then two two other ways from the other bit, just to reduce the cable size down a bit. But because we're using 35 mil back boxes, we're gonna have loads of space anyway. So that was a good run, but that was a good chunk of three core done. So I'm just gonna get the three core in for the two way, for the downstairs light. So from this switch up across to the landing, that's where I need to go. That is then the last bit of three core I've got to use. So we'll start running some stats in and a doorbell and then the smokes as well. So. so this one comes to the point of, that's a 32 mil hole and it's been plenty. And I know that I can run a two, two two fives in this, upstairs loft sockets and loft sockets, two light feeds, upstairs lights, and lo lights in the loft because there could be a conversion at some point. That is the only supplies that needs to go upstairs, plus a three core and earth for the smokes. But because now I need to run three, three core and earths, well, two from here, and then one from in the kitchen across to this area as well, the hole is gonna start getting very tight. And I think the only benefit for me now is to do another one. There is existing holes from the last rewire going across, but they're up shoddy out of the way and I don't like them. But come to the point where drilling a new hole down here would be too close to the end of the beam. I've got all 32 mil holes in there. I could just poke that through and push it that way. I will do that. All it would be is, I know I could use the existing holes that are there. One, it ruins the look and the effort I've gone to with drilling nice straight holes. But then at the same time, you don't want to weaken any joists by drilling excessive holes too close together, especially near the end. So by just using a little bit extra cable, going a foot and a half that way and running down, because it is actually the one right, it was extra step, the right way, because because that big hole there is the uh, feed to go up to the landing. So I'll use that. I am tired. I don't know if you can tell. You know what I'm saying about being tired? So that's the run. I'm going to come up in a minute with the whole hog. Drill all the way up. That's going to be our access up and down uh, between the loft, upstairs lights, that sort of jazz. But that's our three core for our two-way switching. And for some bizarre reason, I brought it there. This is our two-way lighting switch. So. I'm gonna pull it back down, draw this, pull it up here, cut that off, that's done, 
and then I can carry on. So I don't know what I was thinking. I knew I had to do that. I just, yeah, okay, cool, bye. If you are looking for a job management software that helps you do estimates, invoices, quotations, job sheets, scheduling, I think I said that one, uh, look no further. Tradeify, I've used it for the past five years. Uh, that's helped me streamline this stuff. I detest paperwork. I'm severely dyslexic. I have ADHD, which we found out recently, and I've always put paperwork to the back of my mind, and it's always been a last thing. But because I can do it in here using my phone or my iPad as I'm sat on the customer's driveway like I am now, I can, if I've already done the quote, I can literally go click, click, two buttons, send invoice. It just means when I get home, I don't have to worry about doing any paperwork. At Tradeify, between the 18th and the 30th of November, we have our Black Friday discount deal, which is 50% off for the first 12 months. Massive discount uh, using code BF2024. Go and check it out. Link in the description below. So that's one thing with these, I mean, I'm gonna get one. I know there's two versions, look last night, there's the whole hog and there's the super whole hog. But if you've got, if you've got had both and tried both, which one is the best one to go for? But the arm egg bits, completely and utterly, oh, that's too bright, chew through, which is an absolute massive nail. And it is still sharp enough to go through, but now my concern is, <laughs> It's gonna be in all of them, but hey, we crack on. That was effort, but it worked. Carried on going through. Right, we've got our oh, run upstairs. We've got that. We've got, excuse me, two-way switching done. Now, let's get these stats done, the doorbell done, the downstairs smokes, and then we can start upstairs. And we should, I am going to be finished today, and I will stay here as long as it takes until it's done, because I want Monday off. I booked uh monday in as well as a precaution so if i uh if i finish it all today i can have monday off take the kids to school pick them up and chill out for a bit so one thing i've just done i'd recorded some stuff earlier but raj is um doing all the cord drilling one because i don't want to two because it wasn't in the price and three i brought my cord drill and said yeah, mate, you can borrow that no problem at all so he's just done the first one but because of the old part of the house is old the bricks are rock hard compared to what would be coring one in here. Nice and easy. You all right, mate? Have fun? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely covered. He's wearing a mask. He's got glasses. He's got ear defenders on. Hence, I've got my headphones. To be fair, my headphones are always in. Um, one thing I've been doing as well, I did this on the last rewire over, where was I? Stoke, which I've done it here as well because I have wanted to do a CO2 in here for the boiler, which is going to be going on there and I need to do a heat alarm across the kitchen. I've just done an extra link because this is one mil red. So I get asked this all the time, Nick, why is the cable red? What is it? It is just twin and earth, it's Doncaster cable. It's just twin and earth and the cable is just dyed red. It has no other properties, it's not LSF. I'd love them to make an Earthshore version, fantastic, but it's just red. It's just so in years to come, if electrician or someone pulls a floorboard up and they want to, tap off the lighting circuit. They want to put something in. They want to do something with the cables. Seeing a red cable instant, they'll go 90%, well, any electrician 100% of the time should go, well, that's a smoke alarm cable. That's the only reason I use it. It's only a couple of quid extra on the drums uh, for the one mil and the three core. But I just think, I think it's worthwhile. And I think it makes a difference in my eyes, but this is just me being weird again. Um, but yeah, I've so because it's one mil, I've managed just to put two, three cores in it and the one mil supply. It's the first point. And a lot of the reason is I only have a certain amount of this cable, like I have with the three core, which after doing the stats, this is all I have left after hundred meters. So we've done the three stats, the two way hall stairs and landing, the two way for the hall, and then, sorry, I'm going to shut that four way for here. So we've got a little bit left for another job, but hence why I've done a doubled up on the CO alarm going across to the heat alarm. Anyway, shut up name, no one cares.
We are coming to 20 past four, and the last thing I've got to do is upstairs lights. My face looks very dirty. Uh, lost the clip, the magnet for my microphone. I dropped it off from all the way up there, earlier on dropped, and now that's missing, so we need to buy a new one of them. This is the first time ever that I'm actually allowed, I'm going to drill joists upstairs, because you can see the thickness of these, they're massive, but they are, well to be fair, they're even bigger than the joists we've got down here, but this is for a future loft conversion. But the reason that, they're, that they are this big is obviously for load bearing and they're allowing us to drill holes for it to pass cables, obviously sockets at some point. We've got smoke alarm feed up there. We've got uh, its own socket circuit for the loft, its own lighting circuit for the loft. And now we've got upstairs lights all here hung down. We've got light switches in. I've already put the oval in and fed it in to make my life a bit easier. I've gone around, put the piece of wood, screw and holes for our individual lights in each room. So I'm going to jump up, but I am very low. I've only got two stacks of K staples, a few, and then that's full. So I'm going to try and run in as much stuff, but not tack anything. But first plan out now where exactly I'm going to need my lighting cables to run. We're going to use this center trough where they come up to go backwards and forwards throughout and drill minimal holes as best as possible. So like you all know, we've got the set square, we've got the laser, we're gonna jump up. I need to get to this hole and the light switch is over here. So it makes sense to go down and drill it across. That will allow me to do one drill hole that will do this room and the far room to get to its central light. Where's my laser? Oh, where is my laser? I found my laser, it's down here. I wasn't going to go all the way back that way, but now I've remembered I've got to because there is a light switch next to the bed. Right, I'm finally done. I'm not going to tell you guys what time it is because you lot are going to start thinking I hate my family and my children. I'm a terrible father. But I don't have to work on Monday and I can do the school runs. And I can do all the lovely things that I wanted to do. Hence why I'm here so late. It is done. It is tidy. It is packed up. Let me give you a little tour, show you the things that I really enjoy doing and why I've stayed so late, but it turned out to be a really good one and I hope you guys agree. So the kitchen is all done, dusted. We've got our heat alarm, we've got our spots on, we've got various amount of sockets. There's a fan to go up there. Outside light, we've got two up and down lights off the back. We've got our main flood light out the back there as well and one around the side. Coming into the second lounge to a point, we've got one, two, three, four double sockets, five if you include the TV one. Everything is run and is clipped to the best of my ability through the beams. We've got our cable supports and light supports with the wood beams going in, all coming across, looking fabulous. Nice. Lounge, you guys saw that on day one. That's neither here or there. Coming up, we've got our interlink for our smoke, our pendant and our two up and down lights outside the front with a top light as well. It goes out up there as a hanging light above the front door. And this is where it starts to get a bit dark. Uh, master bedroom, done. Pendant up, all clipped. Coming through the beams, all lasered. I have looped round, so for, it's very difficult to show you in this light. For the landing light, you can see over there, so I didn't drill any more joists, obviously the loft hatch is in the way. And because I had to drill holes going this way for this bedroom, we used a bit more cable, but we ran it back. And that's why there's two cables running across this beam back to the switch on the landing, just to create less holes within the beams. We've got our light switches, we've got a TV socket, and all that is really, really chuffed. Really, really chuffed. Up there, we've got our lights and socket power for the loft that's separate. We've got our cables running down within zones. There's a double socket going at the bottom there. Landing, we've got a two-way bathroom and extractor switch going up here with our light. Bathroom, there is no spots in it at the moment because we're going to do it as we come to second fix. And then the other bedroom, which is a duplicate of what we've already done. Running down into the fuse board, this is all of our cables. I've left my temp board and I'm leaving my temporary lights here for Raj to use and just give me back at the end. This is every cable physically within the property that's going to be pulled through. The fuse board's going on this side of the wall. This wall is either going to be dabbed or it's MDF lifted off, but all the trunking, but all the cables are going to be going in 4x2 trunking across and across 
so I can pick up the tails. The gas meter, which is the other side of the wall just there, can be pulled in with an emergency bulkhead light above and a socket, so that's all done. And then the last bit was up and across to try and get our cables down within zones to the fuse wheel the other side. Now there's not much I could have done differently. I could have put some capping on it, I could have put some oval, but to try and separate all this throughout to fit within oval, the oval would have come past 150 mil within the regs, which is this line that I've done here on this side. And I know it's not ideal and it's really not because you can go, oh, people don't know about zones, but who's gonna drill on the left-hand side of a downstairs toilet when the toilet is gonna be going here? I know but the customer requested specifically for the fuse board to go on the other side of the wall. I wanted to put it here, but the decision was made to put it inside. So this is what we've done. It's all been bent. The cable's all been folded, so it's all the right way. Just create, just make sure it's as flat as it physically can be to the wall. It's coming up. I staggered three different holes in the beams to go in certain areas as they all brought across, as you can see there. So yeah, sorry if I'm sniffing those. We brought the six mil this side just to separate, not coming down the joist too much on that side. It's been a long three days. It's been an enjoyable three days, but I'm not really now here until easily in the new year, maybe February, because there's a lot of plastering to do. There's a lot of other work to be done before I can even come back. But I did just say to Raj, if you want me to come back in sections and get the, the board on and power up certain things so they've got power and lights in certain rooms, I've got no issue with that rather than coming back and trying to hit it in sort of two days. So if you enjoy the video, I'm not going to do this for a while. I promise you that now. I feel awful on my family, but equally, they don't mind. I'm earning more money before Christmas, which means I can have a lovely two weeks off at Christmas. And I don't mind doing this. I really don't. And my kids are old enough now. I don't need to explain this to you. It's fine. Thank you very much for watching. Love you. Bye. Also, I've not found a magnet for this, but never mind. <laughs>